Today, I'm gonna show you guys five easy and impressive appetizers that you can bust out at the last minute. Each one of these recipes can be thrown together in just about 30 minutes start to finish, and each one has something kinda chefy about it that will set it apart from everything else on the apps table. So app one is a cheese puff. These things are eggy, light, and taste like a cheese it They're lovely. It's so good. To make them, I'll combine 325 grams of milk with 15 grams of salt, 175 grams of butter, and then I'll slowly bring this thing up to a boil over medium heat. High heat is too aggressive and will probably scorch the milk. And once this buttery milk is up to a simmer, I'll add in 300 grams of all-purpose flour and whisk that to combine. What I'm making here is called pot choux or choux pastry. This is the base of things like eclairs or cream puffs in classic French cooking, but choux pastry can also be used savorily for gougeres, or as we would call them in America, cheese puffs. Pretty quickly, you can see this shoe dough thickens up and a whisk is no longer the right tool. So I'll switch over to a wooden spoon, stir this up and keep cooking over medium heat for about another 60 seconds or so. Next, I'll move this shoe dough over to my stand mixer, then pop on the paddle attachment and spin this up on medium speed. I'll give this about a minute or so of paddling so that I can cool off the shoe. Then I'll grab six to seven large eggs and add them in one at a time. I'll let each egg get worked into the dough, then I'll drop in the next. Depending on how thirsty your flour is or the humidity in your house, the total amount of eggs can vary pretty widely. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's six, but today this is pretty dry, so it definitely needs seven. Let that last one get mixed in, and yes, the dough is ready when it looks this wet and pasty, for real. Now to finish, I'll add 175 grams of grated cheese. I'm using a cheap pre-shredded Mexican blend here, by the way. Then 25 grams of grated Parmesan. Next, I'll spin that for about a minute to fold in the cheeses, and that's how you make a cheesy pot of choux. Feel free to mix and match the cheeses here, by the way, or add in some fresh herbs like chives or thyme or parsley. Next, I'll use a tablespoon and grab a large dab of the dough, I'll wet my hand and then roll this thing into a tidy, tight ball. Of course, if your dough is super sticky or pasty, then an alternative way to get them portioned out is to grab a freezer bag, cut off the corner, and squeeze out little rounds onto a sheet tray. And once I've got roughly 24 of these things balled up on a parchmented sheet tray, I'll load them into a 400F oven and bake for 20 to 25 minutes. And after 25 minutes of bake time, I'll open the oven door, kill the heat, and then let these cheese puffs sit in the oven to cool and set up. If we skip this step, they would most most likely collapse. Now you could go ahead and just serve these warm right away or bake them ahead of time, bring them to a party and then briefly reheat in a 350 oven for about 10 minutes. These are a fun option that I think will set your app apart from the rest of the crowd and definitely dunk on that silly crudite platter with store-bought ranch dressing that your aunt brought. Mm. <laughs> Next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to make plump, juicy, briny shrimp cocktail with a savory nose clearing cocktail sauce. To make it into 3000 grams of water, I'll squeeze two halved lemons and drop those in, then add in two halved heads of garlic, 150 grams of salt, 75 grams of sugar, then I'll move this pot over to the stove and bring it up to a boil. Ooh, two bay leaves go in as well. Now, once this brine is a boiling, I'll simmer it for five minutes to infuse it with the lemon and garlic and the bay leaf. While that cooks, let's talk about the shrimp. For perfect shrimp cocktail, I prefer a U8-12 to white shrimp that is labeled easy to peel. Easy peel just means that the back of the shrimp is opened up and the poop thing has been taken out. Back at the stove, I'm gonna drop in two pounds of these easy peel shrimps into my water, immediately kill the heat, and then set a timer for four minutes. If you're using 2630 shrimp here, by the way, I would say cook for two and a half minutes instead of four. Now, while these shrimp gently poach, let's make the spicy tangy cocktail sauce to bathe them in. First, I'll combine 350 grams or one whole jar of Heinz chili sauce. Hit the 57. Bro. Compared to ketchup, chili sauce has garlic, onion, and chili powders in it, and it's overall just a little bit less sweet. Of course, you could sub ketchup in one for one, but be prepared for a sweeter sauce overall. Next, I'll grab my microplane and zip off the zest of one whole lemon. In that goes, then I'll juice that whole lemon, then add in 50 grams of prepared horseradish, then 10 grams of your favorite hot sauce. Lastly, I'll add in at least 40 cranks of black pepper. Don't be shy. This cocktail sauce should taste like a Bloody Mary, as in it should be savory, sweet, peppery hot, and clear your nose. Back at the stove, after four minutes of cook time, these shrimp are plump, firm, and about 90% cooked. From here, I'll drop in as much ice as this pot will hold so that I can cool these shrimp as quickly as as possible. In the minute or two that it's going to take for them to cool down, they're going to cook that last 10%. Now, before I serve these, I want to mention when you go to peel them, make sure to leave that last segment of shell on a 
attached to the tail. That's gonna give you that necessary handle that you need to hold on to whilst you dunk your shrimp in the cocktail sauce. Now to serve, I'll snuggle up as many of these shrimps as I can fit onto some crushed ice. Then I'll sneak in some lemon wedges to provide acute acidity for those people who want to freak. And you guys, that's my ideal shrimp cocktail. It's very simple and delivers a wonderful eating experience so long as you buy nice shrimp and don't overcook them. Woo, plump, briny, extremely juicy, and horseradish forward. It's perfect. Okay, next, let's make a creamy, crowd-pleasing smoked salmon dip with some everything bagel crackers. But first, I wanna thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video and keeping all my data safe while I'm surfing on the internet at this coffee shop. If you haven't heard of it, a VPN, or a virtual private network, keeps you safe and secure, masking everything that you do online. When you connect to a VPN, all of your information is essentially blurred out, so anyone who tries to snoop on you won't be able to see what you're doing or where you're doing it from. Lauren and I use Surfshark to connect all of our devices to the public Wi-Fi here at this coffee shop when we're having our weekly YouTube business meeting. That way we can look up our banking info or enter passwords without having to worry about anyone getting access to our sensitive information. But you can also use Surfshark in more fun ways, like use it to get travel deals or to unlock shows that might not be available on streaming in your country. So if you want to secure yourself online and watch your favorite shows from anywhere in the world, sign up for Surfshark VPN right now and get their best holiday deal. Just head to surfshark.deals slash Lagerstrom and enter promo code Lagerstrom to get up to six additional months for free. The link is in the description. Thank you, Surfshark VPN. Now to do this dip, I'll add in 250 grams of hot smoked salmon into my food processor. I like hot smoked because it has a fishier flavor in a good way, but if you want something that's milder and less salmon-y, I would say cold smoked would also work. Behind salmon, I'll add in 50 grams of minced shallots, 20 grams of drained capers, three grams of chopped dill, two grams of salt, 50 grams of sour cream, 50 grams of mayo, 150 grams of cream cheese, then I'll zest a whole lemon, again, with my microplane. From there, I'll just add in the juice of half of that lemon, or maybe a little bit more if you like things tart. From here, the lid goes on and I'll pulse this dip 10 to 12 times. You definitely don't wanna over chop this stuff because the sour cream will start to get loose and the water will come out of the salmon and you'll have kind of a loosey goosey mealy dip that's not delicious. And after about 14 chops, you can see, Ooh, this dip looks so good. Before I taste it, let's make a cracker to serve it on. For that, into a food chopper, I'll combine 150 grams of all-purpose flour, 150 grams of whole wheat flour, six grams of salt, four grams of baking soda, 50 grams of everything bagel seed mix, and then 20 grams of olive oil. Now, the lid goes on, and I'll spin this cracker dough while drizzling in 150 grams of room temperature water. No food processor, no problem. You could just stir these things together in a bowl with a spatula, and then flip the whole thing out onto a work surface like I am here. From here, I'll squeeze things together and give the dough three to four kneads. I don't want to go too hard here because then the crackers would be chewy instead of brittle. And once this dough is brought together, I'll cut it into four equal size pieces. Next, I'll grab my stand mixer and my pasta roller and then roll through these quarter pieces three to four times, cranking down the gap on that pasta roller until I'm at the number four. And once I've got a shaggy long sheet like this, I'm going to fold it over itself until I've got a tidy rectangle. I'll turn that rectangle 90 degrees and then feed it through the roller on its widest setting and then crank down to one one, then two, then three, and then finally number four. Again, handmade crackering is totally possible here. Just use a rolling pin instead of a stand mixer and roll these sheets out until they're about five sheets of paper thick. Next, I'll lay all four sheets of my cracker dough onto parchmented sheet trays. Then using a knife or a dough scraper, I'll cut those sheets into long rectangles. This will make them easier to dip and make them bake more evenly. Now the sheet trays go into a 350 oven to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they're nicely golden golden brown and fully crisped up. This is a very simple, easy to make cracker that tastes like an everything bagel and pairs perfectly with the salmon dip. It's also a proper flex on your buddies who brought pre-cut cheese, summer sausage, and triscuits to the party. The dip itself mm. is creamy, smoky, and perfumed with grassy dill, and the crackers have that beautiful fried onion flavor from the e-bagel seasoning. Up next, perfect deviled eggs that taste like Caesar salad. To make them, I'll drop 13 eggs into two quarts of boiling water. 
I like to use a spider and cradle these eggs against the side so that I can drop them without any cracking. I'll set a 12 minute timer and check back then. 12 minutes later, I'll come back and drain off the boiling water, then top this pot with a gallon of ice water. I need to stop the cooking as soon as possible to avoid green edges and a sulfury flavor. Next, I'll peel all 13 eggs and drop the cooked yolks into a large freezer bag. And by the way, I cook 13 eggs instead of 12 so that I can overflow these egg whites with filling. Next, in goes three anchovy fillets that I've chopped into a fine paste, sub capers if you don't like chovies, then 25 grams of Dijon mustard, 75 grams of mayo, five grams of garlic that I'll smash through my garlic press, and then 20 grams of lemon juice and 25 grams of grated Parmesan, preferably Parmesan that you've grated yourself on a microplane. I prefer this feathery grind because it mixes in with the yolks a lot easier than the pebbly pre-grated cheese. Now to mix this thing, I'll just smash it all up inside this baggie. Yes, this is quick and dirty, but it saves me from having to make a mixing bowl dirty and I can pipe this filling right out of this bag. Next, I'll just zip off the corner, then squeeze the yolk mixture into halved egg whites. Ooh, pro tip, to keep these egg halves from sliding around on the plate, I did cut a little bit off the bottom to make a flat spot. Now to finish, I'll shave a little Parmesan on top of each yolk, then I'll add in more than a couple of cranks of black pepper to bring that little cacio e pepe vibe. You guys, this is currently my favorite recipe of 2023. Yes, that might be recency bias, but damn, it's Caesar salad, deviled eggs, and egg salad all at the same time. Mmm, what have I done? Oh my God, I gotta have another. Your mom is gonna love them. Just make them already. Okay, the last, last minute appetizer that I'm gonna show you guys is a vintage one that's ready for a comeback. The stuffed mushroom. To make it, I'll start with two pounds of medium cremini mushrooms and a large empty bowl. To prep these, I'll take a sharp paring knife, stick it in the side here, and then carefully turn the mushroom in my hand, letting the knife do the work. I'll crank that five to six times and then pop out the stem. Now I want to make this a little bit deeper so that I can hold more filling. So I'll repeat that paring knife turn maneuver, this time removing about 20% more of the inside. And once I've got all these caps cleaned up, I should have 450 grams of those or about 18 large caps and 225 grams of stems. Next, I'll season these caps with a long squeezer of olive oil and then a generous pinch of salt. And to prep the stems, I'll just run my knife through until they're broken down into a relatively uniform small dice. Now to cook the filling, I'll drizzle a generous amount of olive oil into a large nonstick pan, then add in 75 grams of panko breadcrumbs and stir fry them until they're golden brown. Over medium heat, this should take about a minute. You wanna keep them moving the whole time so that they don't burn that can happen pretty fast. And once I've got golden brown breadcrumbs like this, I'll move them over to the bowl of my stand mixer, then drop my saute pan back over medium high heat. This time I'll add in 50 grams of butter, melt it, then add in all of my chopped mushroom stems and a strong pinch of salt. From here, I'll stir to combine and fry these stems for about three minutes in total. I wanna get some of the water out of them and give them a head start before I add in 50 grams of small diced onion and 10 grams of minced garlic. From here, I'll stir and fry everything together one more time for about five minutes. And once the onions are softened and the garlic is smelling flavorsome, I'll move this whole thing over to my stand mixer and let it cool for five minutes. From there, I'll add in 200 grams of cream cheese, 75 grams of parmesan, 10 grams of chopped parsley, two grams of black pepper, two grams of salt, and then two grams of dried thyme. To mix this, the paddle attachment goes on and I'll whip it for however long it takes things to get homogenous, maybe a minute or so. If you don't have a stand mixer, you definitely could just stir this together in a bowl with a strong spatula. Just make sure that your cream cheese is super tempered first so you don't have to use a ton of elbow grease. Now to stuff these mushrooms, I'll grab a full spoon's worth and then a cap. I'll push that filling into the carved out section using my hands to spread it out and to press it down. Some downward pressure here is really going to help the filling fuse with the mushrooms so that it doesn't just slide off once we take a bite. And once I've got 18 of these caps filled, I'm going to top each one with a generous pinch of grated Parmesan cheese and then load into a 425F oven and roast for 25 to 28 minutes. And after a hard roast, you can see these stuffed mushrooms look dope. You guys might have had stuffed mushrooms before at a party and thought to yourself, wow, that was wet. Maybe I hate mushrooms now. The thing is, you don't. You just needed to be served the right ones. These mushrooms are earthy, rich, decadent, and texturally pretty awesome. So that's five easy to execute but sophisticated appetizers that will dazzle your guests. 
Or if you're not hosting, then they will at least make the host of whatever party you're about to go to very insecure about whatever appetizers they bought at the store. And if you wanted three more recipes for fun things to serve at your next party, then please check out this video for cheese dip three ways. The buffalo chicken in that video is a real treat. I'll see you there.